Happy New Year, Access fans. Did you miss us last week? Well, we're back with a big 2012 bang. Coming up, we whip through the hottest news in our PlayStation briefing, take a trip to Stranger's Wrath developers Just Add Water, and talk to glowering Conan star Jason Momoa. First up, though, we're casting our gaze over the glorious 2012 horizon and bringing you our gaming picks from the year ahead. Thought 2011 exhausted PS3's supply of amazing? Then cram your corneas full of this lot, it's our look ahead to the best of 2012. Cruising for a bruising, this autumn is fresh-faced PS3 Queen Lara Croft in a Tomb Raider reboot that's hauled anchor on the series' fantasy roots and gone all real. So real there's even dirt on the lens, wow it's like we're there. Poor old Lara probably wishes she wasn't though with the battering she'll be getting. Metal wall! Rampaging flood! Oh wait, you're safe! Butter fingers! It's a shift in focus to raw survival, and this latest Tomb Raider could well challenge Mr. Drake for PS3's Adventure Crown. Uh oh, that's all looking a bit too Independence Day for our tastes. I think we need a heroic shaved man in brilliant armour to come and save the day with a glowing orange arm attachment. Yes, Commander Shepard, get in there! This is, of course, Mass Effect 3, the concluding chapter in Bioware's masterful RPG shooter saga. New combat mechanics mean Sheps can dole out the pain with his fists as well as his laser cannons and biotic powers, and the whole game is coated in a cinematic sheen that surpasses anything the series has shown us so far. But promise me that if it comes to it, you will not let him take me back. Cheer up, love. Might never happen. Actually, scratch that, in the crumbling sky dystopia of Bioshock Infinite, it probably will. The city is called Columbia and is crammed full of patriotic bunting, rioting loons and a network of roller coasters that make getting about the place and shooting men lots of fun. Think Alton Towers without the queues and with an influx of anarchists. Oh, and a massive robot bird who wants to kill you. Three letters and a number. G T A. That's all it took for the world of games to grind to a standstill when Rockstar swept back the curtain on their latest and greatest. Set in the sun-soaked hustle and bustle of a fictional LA, Grand Theft Auto V looks set to tackle ultra-now themes such as the recession, celebrity worship, social networking and uh, golf. But don't worry your sadistic socks, you'll still be able to muck about on jet skis, hijack vehicles and embark on tabloid-bothering murder rampages. Exterminate! And there's plenty more to be excited about too, including open world survival shooter Far Cry 3 with its pretty leaves, pretty sunshine and pretty mad gang leaders, not open world sci-fi shooter Aliens Colonial Marines with its um, aliens and colonial marines, the asphyxiating delights of Hitman Absolution and our surprise pick Ni no Kuni, a Japanese RPG that's beautiful like a kiss in spring. What a year it's going to be. time now as we get friendly with the week's hottest stories. With the UK launch of PlayStation Vita just over a month away, yes really, we sat down to talk FIFA Vita with EA Sports' Matt Pryor, who assured us our pocket-sized footy fix will be every bit as brilliant as the full fat PS3 version. As soon as you pick it up you'll notice it looks exactly like the console version, and it plays exactly like the console version, so yes, that was one of the key things we wanted to do. See? Football's wonderful even when it's tiny. Just ask Sean Wright Phillips. Speaking of Vita, let us ask you the easiest question in the world. Would you like to play the gorgeous handheld before its big February launch? The correct answer is of course yes, and thanks to the Vita rooms which will be springing up in cities across the UK from next week, you can do just that. Events will be taking place in Manchester, Birmingham, Glasgow and London, and you can find all the details on our Facebook page. Go, go, go! So what happens when Batman goes on holiday? He probably tells the kids, no house parties, no drugs, and definitely no shooting everybody while dressed as me. 
To which Gotham City imposters replies, Stuff it, Batbrain. Yep, the copycats have done a naughty and donned their best sellotape cows and homemade grappling hooks for some first-person multiplayer carnage, as monolith Dane McClurg explains. You have people gliding around and you have people grappling across the screen and you know, it's, it's just chaotic. It's just a fun take on the Gotham universe. Come play Gotham City imposters. that's crazy. <laughs> we'll show ourselves out. That's your lot for now. We'll be back with more news next week. After some budget brilliance on which to splurge that excess crimbo cash, look no further, here's our New Year best from on the store. With Grand Theft Auto V currently strutting around open world hype town like it owns the place, which to be fair it does, there's never been a better time to revisit Rockstar's grandiose western adventure Red Dead Redemption. Especially now you can pick it up on PSN complete with Ace Expansion Pack Undead Nightmare for absolute peanuts. Because as everyone knows, if your game doesn't have zombies then your game's rubbish. Our PSP vote goes to Plucky Puzzler The Mystery Team as you solve mysteries like which hooligan child scribbled on the painting and what the hell is this? Characters include human lie detector Annabelle, computer whiz kid Sparks and war veteran Colonel Green, who we reckon did it in the library with the candlestick. A section of the store brimming with quality and a host of titles worthy of a replay is PS1 Classics. Chief among them is Mega Adventure Vagrant Story, which isn't a biopic of a big issue seller, but is a cinematic action JRPG which no one bought when it first came out in 2000. We recommend rectifying that right now, if for no other reason than Hero Ashley Riot's excellent combo of Thunderhair and Manthong. We have a truly massive bonus for you this week in the shape of Jason Momoa, the actor best known as Carl Drogo from Game of Thrones. We're here to speak to him about Conan the Barbarian, out on Blu-ray now, and Jason started our conversation with a shock confession. He's never seen the classic Arnold Schwarzenegger movies. I should see it, and people are uh, really mad at me for not, but I, I, like I said before, I grew up with um, The Single Mother. It came out when I was two, and uh, we didn't watch too many orgies and, and, and you know people getting their heads cut off. Well, my parents told me orgies are character building. Without the benefit of watching the old films, Jason turned to a tribal dance that rugby fans might be familiar with to help him win the part. I got casted for Conan because of Game of Thrones, which was an HBO series that I got. And I went in, it was the same casting director, I went in and um, I did the haka, which is like a, it's a Maori war chant, because this character was, um, he didn't speak English. So I thought it would be good to go in there and do this Hawaiian dance and show what it would be like if you were to go into battle and you see this guy, you know, command his officers and you see that, that warrior side and um, I'm basically shouting and screaming in someone's face and calling down my ancestors in the strength and, uh, you know, they're like, I got your Conan. As a final test of Jason's manliness, we asked how much of the sword-heavy stunt work he braved himself. We had uh, three stunt doubles. One was um, uh, the horse guy because I can't stand horses and, and I'm not very good on them, even though it looks like it's probably my best acting job in the whole movie is like when I'm on that horse, it looks like I'm not in my pants, but I actually am. The horse lord Carl Drogo afraid of horses? Next you'll be telling us those arms are inflatable. You can check out Jason's sweat and muscles in Conan the Barbarian on Blu-ray right now. For those of you too young to remember, the Oddworld games are like PlayStation's The One That Got Away. Quirky and inventive action platformers, the series abandoned PS2 and left us entirely bereft of Steve Smoodarkens and insect firing crossbows. Massive thanks to Yorkshire developer Just Add Water then, the studio that's brought the series home to PS3 with the recent HD remake of Stranger's Wrath and who we recently caught up with to chat all things Oddworld. When we started doing it, we looked at what we wanted to do to the game. We didn't just want to get the original version of it and put it on to PS3. You know, we wanted to do something with it. You know, it was still at point five years old. So we thought when the art needs to be updated, the fact that you know, power the PlayStation behind it, we could do that quite easily. I remember when I was you know, younger when I had my PS1, I'd actually you know, look at the pictures in the back of the manual and they used to have those really cool uh, images of them all working as if they worked at Brookshire Farms or, you know, that sort of thing. And look, oh, wish I was in that picture, you know. And this is, you know, when I just decided I wanted to make games, you know. And then a few years down the line, here I am, which is it's a dream come true, really. 
when you're remaking something. If you're working from the original game res models, which were really low res, they need a lot of work doing to them. And you're not sure whether to start from scratch or use a little bit of the original, and uh, it can be quite tricky. Work on Strangers Wrath finished just before our visit, and the game's now available on the PlayStation Store. So what's next for Just Add Water? We're literally finishing up on Munch HD with some other local people, and once we've actually finished with Stranger ourselves, we've got, so we've got another, another month to work on the updates and extras for, for Stranger, but once that's done we're moving on to a new Abe game under the Old World banner. Um, other than that, I'm not saying anything at the moment because it's going to be a little bit special. Thanks Stuart, you massive tease. And thanks to all at Just Add Water. We'll have more on Odd World when the time comes. You probably already know that Uncharted 3 was the official access game of the year 2011. But what you might not know is that it contains a sneaky reference to developer Naughty Dog's next game, The Last of Us, which sees mankind obliterated by a flesh-eating fungus. <laughs> Take civilization if you want fungus, but you leave my Nathan Drake alone. For more videos and to check out future access events, head to our Facebook page at facebook.com slash PlayStation Access.